With the rise of streaming services since the inception of the internet and video downloads, cable TV has felt the punches that come with competitors that are better and more widely accessible than cable. So today I will explore the drastic decline of cable TV. Well, online streaming is rapidly killing cable. Okay. One in three American households now have a Netflix. Households now have a Netflix subscription. Yeah. You would be outraged because it makes President no sense. But TV has always been there, so it doesn't seem to bother us that much. And now with NDRs and time limits, it's even more of a problem. Yeah, but now the show is going to be on the regular time. Chapter one: The rise to success. When TV first came out, it was an expensive and unjustified purchase, since there was virtually no content to be watched on TV. And in a time of cigarettes being consumed like water, TV was a new and exciting thing. Then, in 1948, a magic invention came out: cable television. This, because it has the sensational new Westinghouse single dial control. There's no more fussing with several dials. You just turn this one dial, and you're tuned in perfectly. At the time, it was news and late-night entertainment for when the kids had gone to bed that was primarily shown on cable TV. And if you had one, you were most likely a member of the upper class in society. That wasn't until 1989 when it started becoming really popular. In 1989, 53 million Americans had a cable TV subscription, with a little over 6,000 systems or programs to watch. Compare that to today; there are a little over 76 million cable subscribers. Which, for reference, is roughly 22 percent of Americans, but in the 1980s, 53 million cable subscribers was about 24 percent of Americans. Taking the accessibility we have today、uh, compared to the 80s in regards of TV and computers, with, for example, Best Buy, it's incredible that it hasn't grown. But why hasn't it grown? Chapter two: A new era. In 1999, a new and exciting company was now available online: Netflix. Our pride and joy in the past couple of years with COVID was started in 1997 as a CD rental company, but went online in 1999 with a revolutionary system called online streaming. From classics to new releases, and even search for children's movies based on age. That way, there's a movie waiting for you at home.、Uh, hello. There's a movie waiting for you at home. Netflix. All the DVDs you want, starting at only nine ninety nine a month, no late fees. In a time of streaming companies popping up left and right, the cable industry didn't really see much change in viewers since computers weren't ex- as accessible as they are today. But fast forward a couple of years to two thousand and three, Netflix hit one million monthly subscribers, which were previously cable TV customers. And within three years, things started to change. 2006 was the critical breaking point for cable TV. People were starting to realize the convenience of of online streaming services. Netflix in 2006 had close to six million subscribers. HBO had around 6.5 million subscribers, and cable TV were feeling the effects. Apple, most of us have something from Apple, an iPhone, a MacBook, or something else like AirPods. Nevertheless, the first MacBook was launched in 2006. HBO and Netflix popularity charts after the launch of the MacBook took a turn for the better. Cable TV could only wish it was them because they were falling behind. Chapter three: Is cable dead? The short answer is no. There are still seventy-six million subscribers to cable TV, so the sun is still shining. There are no doubt entertaining shows and other forms of entertainment on cable. But it's just easier to find something you really want to watch on YouTube, Netflix, HBO, or Hulu. Simple as that. Cable just can't provide the same convenience as streaming services can. Most of the people that watch cable TV would be older people, senior citizens who haven't quite caught up to the technology wave of the world. They enjoy putting on a channel and just letting someone else decide what to watch, and that just might be the way to go for cable. People of all ages know the endless possibilities with streaming services. And just how deep the ocean is. So, in my opinion, cable TV should either let themselves die or fight to go online. If cable were to go online and make themselves more convenient and more accessible with their content, they would no doubt see a slight comeback in viewership. Chapter four: Why is it dying? 
The price of cable is significantly higher than online streaming platforms like Netflix, HBO, or Hulu. A regular low-end priced cable subscription at Dish Networks is priced at $69.99 a month for access to 190 different channels. Yet at Netflix, subscription starts at $9.99 a month, and the ultra-premium package still wins by miles in comparison to cable coming in at $19.99 a month. With these prices in mind, it makes it a bit easier to understand why most people go with an online streaming service instead of cable since it's so much cheaper and new content is being added almost daily. The pricing strategies of these cable companies is very similar to Netflix and other streaming services. The customer is being charged on a monthly basis until cancelled, but the upside to cable in some instances is that a viewer may be able to stream live sports and other events, uh, sometimes without an extra charge. Chapter 5. The Upsides and Downsides of Cable TV Even though we all like watching Breaking Bad on Netflix or wherever you watch it, there are still some people in the world who does not have access to the internet or computer in general. For those reasons, cable TV is more accessible in countries without internet access than a streaming service is. Cable TV is available all over the world, even in North Korea, um, who does not have access to Netflix or HBO. They instead have access to cable TV. It's government regulated, of course, but you get the point. Key demographics vary by, by outlet, time of day, and programming type, but they are generally composed of individuals who are younger and more affluent than the general public. Young adults viewers have been TV's target demographic for decades because they're thought to have less brand loyalty and more disposable income, said the New York Times in 2010. To conclude this video, all I want to say is that I don't think cable TV is dead, but it's definitely on the decline. With movies going straight from production onto streaming platforms, it's more desirable than ever to get one of these streaming subscriptions to one of these services. Cable isn't dead, but I don't think it will make a comeback.